Angel Heart Radio programs should not be used to replace your legal or medical advice. Welcome everyone to Angel Heart Radio. You are our focus. We want you to know that you matter in the world and that you're important to the world. We're here to remind you of just how valuable and needed you are right now. Help us to help others. If you like what you hear, tell your friends, post, tweet, pin, let everyone know how amazing Angel Heart Radio is. So again, welcome to Angel Heart Radio. Powered by love, Angel Heart Radio is sponsored by angellight777.com. Good morning, everybody. And I realize that for some of you, it's not morning. I'm Annette McCoy, and I am delighted to be with you this week, full of apologies for those of you who uh, listened in last week and didn't hear much, except a little bit of music if you stayed on for a little time. Oh, silly, silly me. I misunderstood the signal on my headset and... I was on mute. I thought I was speaking to you all and I wasn't, so I do apologise. Next week, you can hear the Body Talk Hour. Fortunately, we have an extra Wednesday in August and so I am going to be doing the Body Talk Hour next week. This week, of course, it is our usual situation every fourth Wednesday, Tuesday for those of you lucky enough to live in the United States or that part of the world, uh, I have Janet Hickox with me and as a lot of you know, Janet adores astrology, especially human design astrology and Janet uh, presents every morning Monday to Friday on Facebook under her page Living Astrology. I wonder if you've heard her. Now is your opportunity to hear her live on Angel Heart Radio and keep in mind you can hear her every morning Monday to Friday. Janet, welcome. Thank you, Annette. It's a pleasure to be here and thank you for telling people about my morning my morning show. It's been uh, so fun to do that. Good. And aren't we so fortunate to be living our passion? Uh, yes, absolutely yes. And it is wonderful that we live in this technological age where we can connect in the ways that we connect. It's like almost unheard of. You know, could I have imagined that 30 years ago, 20 years ago, that I could, mm. uh, you know, be doing some of the things I'm doing? I, I just don't know. But right. certainly things are getting interesting as the, yes. you know, <laughs> all the different ways that we can talk to one another and, and meet up uh, are expanding, you know, exponentially mm-hmm. at times. Yes, or so indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Well, how amazing. You're one side of the world, I'm the other. And here we are. Speaking We're not even in the to same the world. Day, right? With, yes. I'm on Tuesday. You're on Wednesday. I mean, it's... <laughs> and, oh. It's magical. It's magical. <laughs> it is very, very much so. And yeah. we have Simon listening in as he and he's in the UK. So Oh, <laughs> uh, hello Simon. Supporter. And for listeners, wherever you might be at the moment, thank you for taking the time to listen in to Angel Heart Radio. If it is your first time why don't you visit the website just to see what other shows are available. And we present lots and lots of shows. Our creator and woman extraordinaire, Anaya Joy Holily, spends hours making sure that what is being presented on Angel Heart Radio is of the highest quality and also of interest to people. Anaya believes in spreading the word as I do, as Janet does. You know, it's so important for us all to be as informed as we can be. You know, what do we understand about this life on earth? How can we improve ourselves? How can we improve our lives? And Janet, you're here to tell us just <laughs> what's going on astrologically and how that 
certainly impacts on our lives whether we know it or not. Absolutely. And you know what's funny about that is that so many times people say, you know, well, how can a planet moving retrograde <laughs> make any difference to me, you know, on this little planet Earth? But what we find is that we have this, you know, sort of saying or a tenet that is as above, so below, and as within, so without. Basically saying that, you know, the heavens above are really just an outpicturing of, uh, the, or a macrocosm of the microcosm here on Earth. And also that whatever it is that's going on within you is also visible by seeing outside of you. And mm-hmm. so, in in other words, if you're seeing you know, joy and excitement and pleasure and fun in your outer world, that means your inner plane is also resonating with that. And of course, the converse is true as well. So it's, there's these, these, we can draw these parallels, if you will, or, or these connections um, to our world versus uh, the planets in the sky and also what's happening in our lives versus what's going on within us. And it's really mm-hmm. extraordinary to be able to share that with people, uh, well, on a daily basis or in a setting where I'm doing a personal reading for somebody about what's going on in their lives. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you mm-hmm. know, against the bigger backdrop of all of the things that are happening in the world, politically, um, you know, in, socially, and uh, the uh, an astrologer can really show you sort of the backdrop of what's happening and why for example all of this summer has been such Mm -hmm. an interesting summer astrologically because there have been so many planets in retrograde motion throughout the whole of the summer and you know mercury released us from retrograde on the 18th uh so just last saturday and mars will release us from retrograde on the 27th and on september 6th saturn so the the planets are beginning to change direction But today I want to talk about another planet that is going to change direction, but this one will be going retrograde, and that is the planet Venus. And, Mm -hmm. of course, Venus Venus and Mars, you know, are two planets. We call them the inner planet, the personal planet. So when these two, including Mercury, Mercury, Mars, and Venus, when they turn retrograde, we really need to pay attention because they're so close to the planet Earth that they really affect us personally. So that's really what I wanted to be able to talk about today. Right. How exciting. Now, Janet, at the moment, uh, our lines are open. If people would like to ring in for a mini reading, and by that I mean you might have one question to ask, because usually uh, the switchboard lights up and we do like to get through (laughs) as many callers as we can. (laughs) So be fair. (laughs) If you would or if like, you can contain me, <laughs> Janet, of course, you can go to Janet's website and request one. Of course, there, Janet, you very kindly offer a free human design chart anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, as well as a free natal astrology chart, your birth chart. And mm-hmm. that comes also with a little explanation of what it is you're looking at. And, you know, a sort of idea of how to read what you're seeing. Beautiful. So people can find you on Facebook, Living Living Astrology. And your website has that dash, doesn't it? Uh, Hyphen, right. Yeah, living hyphen or dash astrology.com. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) I mean, thank you for sharing that information. (laughs) Well, it's important, isn't it? Because people want to know how they can get in touch with us. And, uh, yeah, so there you are, people. Facebook, every (laughs) morning. That's right. All right. Welcome to Bob in the chat room. And... If you, oh, here am I saying, if you would like to ring in with a question. All right, the area code in the USA is 714, then 583-6858. And, of course, if you're called to call in from anywhere else in the world, please put the plus one before dialing 714-583-6858. Five, eight, 
and be aware that charges might apply uh, depending on your uh, subscription and what phone you're using. Although, Janet, really, isn't it amazing? I don't know about in, in America. Here, there is so many free calls available to us worldwide. Right. Uh, it's fabulous. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of options. But you know what I noticed the other day, which is so annoying, is uh, I have a telephone conference line that I use for uh, readings for people that don't want to necessarily be on video or don't have access to video, Skype and Zoom uh -huh. and things like that. Well, my telephone companies decided they're going to charge me a, uh, one cent per minute to do those readings on these oh. on this telephone conference line. And oh. it's annoying, but I guess, you know, 60 cents or 90 cents, you know, because they're usually 60 to 90 minute readings this isn't so bad. But you got to watch them because, you know, sometimes they'll just toss that out there. And I had no idea. Right. So. Yes. It's, and it's, it can be a nasty shock when we get a bill, when we think that... Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> people, people here, their grandchildren come and say, oh, yes, can I use the Internet? And uh, some people have been shocked with the bills that have been presented because, you know, they've had enough internet coverage within their plan for themselves, uh, but not for grandchildren downloading whatever they might be downloading or whatever. Oh, oh yeah. I was a bit surprised because I have a warning. I get a warning because sometimes if I've moved, I might assume I'm on Wi-Fi and guess what, I'm not. Uh, but my, uh, they do let me know that, hey, you know, you're getting... <laughs> <laughs> spiraling um, or skyrocketing. So, but we do. Yeah. It's about awareness and personal responsibility. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. So, None so and, and, you know, and, and awareness and responsibility. Those are really interesting words because you know a lot of times when these planets are dancing around the sky like they have been over <laughs> the course of this summer. <laughs> Um, it does it does cause us to move more inward. So especially when they're retrograde, it it gives mm -hmm. us like this pathway to becoming much more inward focused. So if you have a planet like Mercury that is about communication and about signing contracts and transportation and rules the mind, you can't see me. I'm always doing these hand gestures. You know, now I've got these little quotes, <laughs> um, air quotes, the mind. Um, then you get to move more inward and maybe be more have that more inner dynamic more accessible to you. So being able to move through the mind's issues and uh, to be able to see things more clearly. Mars, on the other hand, is a planet of action. And while that planet is in retrograde, then it takes us inward for more planning and organizational type of actions as opposed to the more outward uh, dynamic actions that we normally think of. So mm -hmm. now with Venus, Venus is the planet that rules our money, our relationships, love and harmony and, you know, all those feel good emotional types of connections that we make with people. And she also rules self-worth and our values, how we value not only ourselves, but what it is in our world that we value. For example, you might say that, like in my life, I value family. Family is mm -hmm. important. Some people might say it's family and God or it's, you know, there's just different things that we value. So Venus puts the spotlight on those things in, in the normal direction when she's moving in her normal direction. Now, when she moves into retrograde, what she's getting ready to do um, she makes us take that inward turn now and look at places where we are out of alignment with our values. So if you say that you value family, but you're spending all of your time on your career, then there's a mismatch perhaps in the way that you're expressing your values in the world. And then mm -hmm. this retrograde will be a time where that gets spotlighted right? You may have issues going on within your relationship. And while Venus is out in the world doing a regular thing, you're dealing with those, you know, interpersonal relationships. And then she turns retrograde and she makes you look within in the mirror 
and take a look at what does that mean for me? Why am I seeing what I'm seeing in this relationship in the outer world? So that is, you know, some of those are some of the things that we'll have that we'll be faced with as we move forward here uh, into the retrograde. So I want to give you the retrograde dates and the shadow dates Lovely. because re- planets always do this, right? They go into a shadow period, and the shadow period is marked by uh, the degree at which they will uh, backwards all the way back to, if that makes sense. So, for example, September 2nd, which is what, just two weeks from now? um, Yes. Venus will enter her retrograde zone at 25 degrees Libra. And she will actually turn retrograde on October 5th at 10 degrees of Scorpio. And from October 5th to November 16th, she will go backwards through the Zodiac from 10 Scorpio backwards to 25 Libra. And when she gets there, she'll go back to direct motion, and that will be on December 17th. Um, Or, excuse me, on November 16th. And then on December 17th, she is done with her whole entire retrograde um, phase. So from September 2nd to December 17th, we're dealing with issues of Venus. (laughs) Plain and simple ah. for those. That is what September to October, November, December. That's three months. Basically, the the bulk of the fall or the autumn uh, here, and the bulk of the spring for you all down under. Um, mm. You will be dealing with issues of relationship and values and our money and all of the different things. You know, trying to bring balance and harmony. You know, what else is interesting here is that Venus also rules the divine feminine. And uh, the the feminine energy is, you know, undergoing a lot of of change right now. She she as in the feminine is you know rising up in uh, claiming her her rightful place, you know, as, as the partner to the divine masculine. And that's mm-hmm. a process. That process that we are undergoing, um, not only during the direct motion, but as well under the retrograde motion. I hope all of that's making sense to you. Well, it is. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, bring it on. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, Venus of all the planets that turns retrograde is usually not so, I I don't want to say it's not so bad. (laughs) Um, (laughs) None of them are really very bad. It's It's not about whether they're good or bad. But I think, you know, there's a relative comfort level that some people have with dealing with issues in their outer world versus being forced to look within at the issues that are going on within them. And, you know, Mm -hmm. here's the part that we really have to get as human beings on this planet, that we have to gain the consciousness to be able to look within to get a read on why it is that our outer world looks the way it does. Right? Right. (laughs) I mean, so many times we want to blame you know, or we want to become the victims of what uh, the circumstances mm. of our lives. And the more we do that, the more it takes us away from really being able to express the truth and the fullness of who we really are. Mm-hmm. So all of these planets and their little dance in the sky bring us closer and closer, uh, hopefully, to more consciousness and more mm-hmm. ability to become responsible, responsible. And, yes. uh, and you know, we can literally chart that in a chart because, you know, the planets are transiting around your wheel and they're going to be in various houses. The houses are just the areas of your life that are affected by that particular planet. So, for example, wherever it is that you have 25 degrees Libra to 10 degrees Scorpio is the part of your chart that will be affected by the retrograde. So it might be in your money house which means that the focus is going to be on values around money and banking and how you spend your money, how you earn your money, etc. It might be on the seventh house of marriage, and it may be spotlighting the values that you and your spouse share and how you and your spouse move through um, challenges, uh, you know, and, and what you're mirroring to one another. So mm-hmm. it's really valuable to look in your chart to be able to see what is going on and where is this taking you. Right. And I do like the way you talk about responsibility because ultimately it does come back to ourselves. You know, it's 
it can be very human <laughs> and very easy <laughs> to blame a situation, other people, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, instead of looking at, oh, okay, so what part did I play in this? Uh huh. Yeah. And you know, uh, for the past seven years. We had Chiron, the planet that the asteroid or the centaur that represents our wounded self, our wounded healer, uh, moving through the sign of Pisces. So for nearly seven years, we've been focused on where are we playing the role of victim? Where are we not being responsible for the creations that we've made and for the situations and things that we find ourselves in? Because every time that we want to blame the government or our spouse or our upbringing or, you know, whatever, we're disempowering ourselves, right? We're we're not, we're not taking, we're not able to respond to what needs to be done or to what we would like to do or who we would like to be. We're actually just putting out fires because the situation is going to keep repeating itself until you learn the lesson about taking responsibility, (laughs) So there's a lot about this time period that we're in. It just seems this whole year has been sort of a drumbeat so far about our values and about becoming responsible. And uh, the two signs that Venus rules are Libra and uh, Taurus. And, of course, we all know that you know Uranus now is moved into Taurus. So we have some surprises ahead and some... Uh, epiphanies in the making perhaps if we can take responsibility for ourselves we could change the world even so oh, absolutely mm-hmm. yes yeah i believe that by living in and through love and taking responsibility for ourselves respecting ourselves and respecting everything else on this planet ha ha mm. what a wonderful world we would live in Oh, gosh, yeah, and loving yourself enough to do that, mm-hmm. right? That, you know, sometimes we figure ourselves in last when it comes to love because we somehow, I, you know, I don't know how this happens, <laughs> but somehow we equate self-love with being selfish or self-centered, which mm-hmm. I never mm-hmm. use self-centered as a bad way. I always think of self-centered as being, you know, me being in my power center and being able to give of my my time and my service uh, because I'm full, right? Not because I'm d- drained or depleted. Um, mm-hmm. But h- how that got twisted, you know, self-centered got twisted into being selfish or narcissistic is beyond me. Mm-hmm. But but when I use those terms, I'm talking about coming from a whole, healed, and healthy, loving yourself and loving others place. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what you mean, too. Yes. Yes to the best of my ability. <laughs> Every so often, <laughs> it comes up, oh, I'm human. Oh, <laughs> oh as as no. I like to be. <laughs> well, you know, an and that's angel. part of our experience here too, right? It's the realization that, yeah, everything's perfect in this moment, just the way it is. And it can't yes. be anything other than that. And so therefore, mm-hmm. release yourself from blame and being the victim and being the martyr because everything's perfect just the way it is. And, yeah, you're going to mess up. You're going to forget. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I'm becoming the responsible yeah. <laughs> human being now. <laughs> um, you know, because we get in, we've get we had habits. You know, for most of us, all of our lives, in some way, we have played the role of victim. So that's a hard thing mm-hmm. to give up. So we just have to, you know, retool, if you will, our thinking and our perception of who we are and to re- to the recognition that we are so much greater than what we have given ourselves credit for being. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So ah joyful 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 and that's so important too. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. That, Janet, you know how how do we feel and if how do I deal with myself if I'm not feeling a hundred percent or whatever you know have I been going too hard is this my body's way of saying hey chill for a yeah. day you know, put yourself top of the list there there is an element of self-care here you're right in you know Venus is the, is the love the principle of love but love 
you know, toward yourself as well as love toward others. And mm-hmm. loving yourself is as as important as being able. How can you love others if you don't love yourself? That's a good question there. Yes. Yes. Right. So mm. there's often that disconnect there. Right. Now, Janet, we mm-hmm. do have a caller. Okay. Would you like Let's us see who they are take... and what they would like yes. us to do? Good morning and uh, welcome day, to Angel Heart Radio. Good day, ladies. I believe I'll I'm... just plug in my earphones. Well, that would be very good. I believe we're speaking to Bob. Hello, ladies. How are you? Good. Very good. Bob, how are you? Uh, awesome. I'm just trying to turn off the air con. We could just make a bit of noise in the background. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning up here in the Whit Sunday Islands. Oh, I just... I just feel so grateful to have, um, yeah, created this space for me. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah, life's beautiful when you take responsibility for it, isn't it? You know, like, um, yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's just my experience. Yeah, I too was a victim for years, and um, it wasn't until I took total responsibility for me that um, I turned my life around. You know, like, mm. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So getting back, I don't want to. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, and it's not often another question, um, because normally whatever I need to know, I find within. Um, but having taken responsibility for my for my my life um, consciously, uh, um, I've done a pretty good job on my mental well-being, my emotional well-being, and my spiritual well-being. And now I'm just starting to focus. For my physical well-being. Interesting that I left that one to last day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, something had to be last. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm just wondering if you can see anything um, that I ought to be uh, looking out for. Uh, I think okay. just, just as an example, um, I started suffering from depression in uh, 1984. And I was trying to think my way out of it. And it wasn't until I started feeling it that I actually got through it. And it was it was the feelings and listening to my body that got that got me through depression, which for me now has just been a rite of passage. It's not an illness. It was just my my soul telling my mind to shut up. <laughs> and I needed to put my heart in the dry I needed to put my heart in the driving seat, you know? And put my mind back in its place. And I sleep in the dog basket. <laughs> well, um, yes. so, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. The mind, the mind yeah. chatter, the monkey the chatter. The mind, yeah. And, and you know, the mind is so powerful that it can really convince you that you're something that you're not, um, or cause you to totally forget the truth of who you are. So, uh, Bob, I would be happy to take a look at your chart, but I have I ever done a reading for you? And if not, then I'm going to need your birth information so I can take a look at that. Uh, well, for this incarnation. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Bob, why okay. don't you give me, what is right. your birth date? Uh, the same as Nikola Tesla, my hero. Uh, 10th of July, 1952. Okay. And what time were you born? Um, I'm not sure. I get a feeling it was about 2 a.m. Okay. And what city, what country and city were you born in? Um, England, and the closest to where I was born would be London. And I've just got to turn my whistling kettle off. So okay. I'll, you go ahead while I pull up the chart. Mm, Thanks, done. darling. Done. There we go. <laughs> Nothing like live radio. I know it's awesome, but it gives me time to pull this chart up, and and you know no, it's all you know perfect. what's interesting. A lot of times now our websites are are taking much more time, as our virus and malware and adware all you know take their turn to tell us whether or not the website is safe. So mm-hmm. goodness, sometimes I mean, one day I couldn't even get into a website because it kept telling me its security certificate or something wasn't good. And I was like, well, that's weird. Mm. So, all right. Are you back with us, Bob? He's not Not yet. Yeah, most of me, yeah. Most of you there? (laughs) (laughs) So 
I just think it's time to say, <laughs> Janet, to to welcome listeners wherever they are and to remind people that they are listening to Angel Heart Radio, to the dulcet tones of myself, Annette McCoy, and astrologer, Janet Hickox. And at the moment, we have Bob on the line as well. And Bob, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we're pretty close in time to your birth, um, because you know that really drives how accurate the chart is. And as I'm looking now at where your natal Venus or where Venus is transiting in your chart, and as she's preparing to retrograde, it's in the house of health. I can't believe that, right? I, I mean, <laughs> you know, astrology always. It never fails to surprise me because of the the things that are happening. He intuits, you know, that there's something going on with health, that it's time for him to focus on the physical. And indeed, that's exactly what I'm seeing here in your chart. And um, there's also Jupiter in that same area. She's in Scorpio. He is in Scorpio. I always call her she, but it's a he. And uh, Venus is in Libra, but your sixth house is rather large and it rules the physical body. So it feels to me like there is a lot of opportunity here for you to get some health um, things under uh, control or to move through some issues. And I'll tell you, the best way for you to move through these issues are going to be to return yourself to joy, to just enjoy life, enjoy, embody joy. And if you want to, if you want to, I would embrace the unconscious patterns as they come up, even if it is a depression type of feeling. You know, honestly, depression is an emotion. It's an emotional state. And in human design, especially what we see is that depression is that time of cradling new things, that it's only the mind thought that there's something wrong because you're in quiet or solitude or Things aren't, you know, exciting and, you know, fresh. Uh, it's only your mind's interpretation that that makes it something to be depressed about or that, you know, you're depressed. And the minute you put I am in front of that depressed, you become that state. Instead of I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling sad, I'm feeling lost, I'm feeling lonely, you know, those kinds of things. Put it in its correct perspective, which is in this moment – these are the things I'm feeling, but it doesn't necessarily mean um, that um, I am that. Does that make sense to you, Bob? Yeah, and can I respond to what you've shared, please? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, thanks, ladies. Um, yeah, how can I put it? Um, I'll just share what's present for me. You know, okay. I, I never have a script. <laughs> Even as a folk singer, I never wrote a song list because every gig was different. Um, where I'm in my life now, I am so grateful to be the observer of me in my life. And so, you know, I can see what's unfolding in my life and I can choose whether to, to engage with it or not. For me, uh, after having suffered from what Western medicine called depression for over 20 years, I, you know, I came to the realization that this this pain I was feeling from depression, and it was a pain. The pain was real, but the mm-hmm. label was wrong. It was it was not an illness. So I sat down one day with that pain and thought, well, any conscious, loving, soulful, wholesome human being would feel pain from having to live in such a corrupt society. It's the way that we are living now that is causing me this pain, and I'm just sensitive to that. So once I identified that, I could you know, put a wall around it and then use the pain as the energy to find my own solution to go through this right of passage and learn from this lesson. So for me, depression was a gift. And now in my life, there's really no good or bad. There's no really right or wrong for all of those just experiences. They are something for me to experience. And every event that occurs in my life that I do create for myself, every event holds a lesson for me. I just Mm. have to find the lesson, find the lesson and learn learn it. Like um, last year when Cyclone Debbie took my my boat away that I lived on um, up in Pioneer Bay, I lost everything, you know, in sort of uh, magazine terms. 
I lost everything, but the lesson I learned from that was to totally let go of the attachment to things. You know, I reckon it was a good price to pay for such a valuable lesson. So <laughs> oh, I create my life. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I saved what was important, ladies. You know, I saved my two little dogs and me and experienced Mother Nature um, just reminding humanity that if you want to push against me, mate, I can push back. Because, you know, to see her in her full power is just awesome. To witness that was just amazing, you know, to be to be right in the middle of it, right in the eye of it, literally, was an amazing experience. So, yeah. So on the health side, you're saying uh, follow my... Um, Follow my joy. What what brings me yeah. joy will lead me to physical yeah, well-being. Yeah, absolutely. What? You know, your your natal Jupiter, um, and this is you know a little off the subject of Venus, but your natal Jupiter sits in the twelfth house. When I see that, it doesn't matter who it is. There is a hidden master within you that you're here to bring more and more of it out. And your Jupiter happens to be in Taurus. And so it may be issues of, of value and self-worth or even prosperity versus lack that are the triggers for you in your unconscious that bring you to that feeling of depression or sadness. And uh, so here's the, this great opportunity for you to really claim the master within you and, you know, w- to heal this energy for its final time in your life. Right, he, just to, to to let this go and become your strength, and not, you know, what's interesting too, uh, is that Jupiter by transit right now. Okay, let me set the stage here. So <laughs> your natal your natal Venus is sitting at the point of a T square, and a T square is a highly charged, energetic challenge, if you will, to uh, uh, kind of your evolution. Right, so. First of all, Jupiter is always the planet that teaches us about growth and expansion and what is our next level of evolution. And the T-square, the point of it is that you are really focused on growth. It is the empty end of that T-square that is where you can bring balance. And right now, the balance point is exactly opposite of your natal Jupiter because transiting Jupiter is sitting at 15 degrees of Scorpio. (laughs) I mean, I can't make this stuff up, right? So it's telling you right now is the time (laughs) to heal this physical, that your physical being is inextricably linked to your spiritual well-being. And that's your... your, It's your challenge now, right? It's your balance Uh point here. Yeah, well, it just goes to show doesn't it that um, there are no coincidences you know I've had this Absolutely. urging over the past couple of weeks to um, to get out of denial and start taking responsibility for my, my <laughs> physical well-being yeah. and um, I'll just share I'll just share just share quickly a couple of things um, that are present for me uh, for me uh, my mind is just a tool that I use when I choose for I am so much more than my mind um so I treat mm-hmm. my mind like I treat my my puppy dog. You know, when he gets feisty, my mind, I say, okay, mind, go off and do some research on sonoluminescence and come back and give me your report. So off it goes, wagging its little tail, because it's had some attention from the master. It comes back and reports to me. I pat it on the head, give it a treat, and I say, okay, mind, back in the basket. And then the, <laughs> and that's and that's what works for me. That's how I learned to silence the monkey chatter in my life. You know, I oh. took control over the mind, which is just one of my tools. And um, and the second one is this one came to me the other day, and I love it. I really do. It's um, and you can quote me on this. Um, thinking <laughs> is the weapon of mass distraction. Ooh. Thinking is the weapon of mass distraction. For while people are thinking, they're not feeling. They're not listening to their heart, you know. So, yeah, I'll I'll leave you those two. And thanks for your time. And thanks for um, confirming what I I feel within my body. Because it's listening to my body that has got me to where I am today. I've thrown away all Western pharmaceuticals. I've thrown away all Western pharmaceuticals. Because, you know... (laughs) 
They don't want cures, they want customers. It took me, I'm a slow learner, you know, but it took me, took me years to oh, realize join the that. Cl- join the club, yeah. Bob. <laughs> oh, thank that, you so, so that. much for yes, what thank you, you have shared. And it has been lovely speaking with you. And as we always say, Janet, listeners who call in are not only assisting themselves, they're assisting others as well. And there were some beautiful gems in there that Bob was able to share. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, we are all one. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And. You know, Bob's experiences are literally um, are echoed by other people out there. Even as he's talking, I'm, I'm even feeling it in my own self, right? As, uh, it, you know, truth is truth, and you feel it. Mm-hmm. You feel that, that reverberates through your body, your beingness. So thank you yes. so much, Bob, for sharing with us today. It's interesting, too, because earlier we were mentioning the um, nat- the natural disasters that, um, and I use that, it's interesting that that word came up, natural phenomena, if you like, the bushfires and uh, the earthquakes, and they are causing destruction. What we yeah. need to realize, as Bob pointed out, is that if we come through with our lives, how special is that and the other side of that for me is it gives the rest of us who aren't in those situations the opportunity to support those who are yeah you know um, it's really interesting because fire you know it's such a purifying element and you could you know if you look at the world and, you know, fire is in the outer world, but what is it really telling us about, you know, what's going on within us, about what's going on within our um, our psyche or our beingness? And in a very real way, we're purifying, right? We are we're going through a process of as humanity of purifying. And whether that is, you know, looking at the juxtaposition of our destruction in the environment and the inner environment and what are we doing with that like you know bob was saying with pharmaceuticals and so forth how are we polluting our own you know inner selves um, because we're seeing it in the outer world as well so everything everything in this world is also a model of something that's going on within each one of us and in that if that's the case then what you really see is we are all one and we're all in this ship together (laughs) <laughs> we're all <Right>. in this <laughs> and well, you know one of the things I was, I've been looking at all week actually since about middle of last week with my listeners early in the morning on uh, uh, Facebook is the idea of human design and the gates in human design that Venus will be moving through are all in the spleen and the spleen is the center for fear it's actually the center for survival. It is the oldest uh, center that developed in the human body and in our energetics. And the purpose was to keep us alive, right? So we'd know what could eat us, that, that we knew mm-hmm. that winter came along and we'd have to put up, you know, food so that we could survive a winter or make clothing, uh, et cetera. So survival instinct arose from a time period in our evolution where uh, we really needed that survival instinct. Now, it, mm-hmm. of course, it's kind of morphed into these false evidence appearing real, the acronym for fear, if you will. And so right. Venus over the next, you know, three months is going to be sitting at every one of the gates in the spleen, like some kind of cosmic joke, right, <laughs> about <laughs> our having to look, every one of us, nobody will be immune to this, right? This isn't, you know, something that you're, you know, you could either go kicking and screaming into this, being drug in there. Or you can open up and just be willing to look in and see where the um, fear has taken hold, where the shadow is holding sway in your life, where you are making decisions out of a fear of not surviving instead of from a choice of of thriving and flourishing. And it's, it's, it's amazing to me. It's huge. This is huge. And so every day I've been taking people through the different gates um, in the human design spleen to really look deeper into the shadow. What is the shadow? This week, the shadow we're talking about is inadequacy. 
and it's very powerful inadequacy, right? It causes us to um, compare ourselves to other people and uh, causes us to compete, you know, in ways that are not necessary. It, it um, okay. causes us to keep believing that we have to do something more or be something more before we can actually go out in our world um, and live our lives to our fullest. And it's a trick, right? It's a trick. It's not a treat. It's a trick. Those, um, <laughs> those fears, are create, they create paralysis points for us. So over these next three months, we are also going to have to address every paralysis point that we have. The fear of inadequacy, the fear of the future, the fear of the past repeating itself, the fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of not being um, uh, uh, failing in your responsibility to your family, um, the fear that things will never be perfect. I mean, and those. there's one more. I'm missing one. Uh, the fear of struggle, like the struggle is all for naught, that, you know, you're mm. going to work and work and work on something and it's never going to happen that you get what you desire. So. We will be working through every one of these. Every person on the planet will be. Whether you choose to do it open head, open hearted, open minded, or whether you choose to shut down and have to, you know, re experience, um, it's up to you. Uh, uh, so it it's you know, for me it's just a way to get more details about what we will be experiencing through this time period. Right. Yes. And that can help us sight. So hear you, Janet. The fact that things are going to happen to us, and it's it's not the experience; it's how we deal with them. It's exactly and that is in, entirely up to us. You know, do we want to <laughs> go kicking and screaming and hitting our head against a brick <laughs> wall, or you know, woe is me, or do we find uh, that little gem, the speck of gold that is in every situation that we're in no matter how dire it might appear to us yeah. uh, you know it's important that we do look for that yeah. little speck mm. yep. one of the first places that uh, Venus in retrograde will hit for us is the gate 32 which is literally talking to us about or when she hits the retrograde zone I should say is going to be about um, the concept of success and failure and our ability to see beyond success and failure and, you know, to see what we gained from the experience. It, it will mm. be about our experiencing ourselves and our um, being able to live from our values and to, to look at our lives in different ways and through different eyes. Right. Instead of looking at, oh, I spent 20 years, you know, trying to, you know, make a career and it, you know, blew up. Um, mm. But looking at it from, well, what did I gain from that? Mm. What did I gain from that relationship that ended? What did I gain from the trials and tribulations of experiencing poverty and, you know, uh, rags to riches stories and all of these different things? What did I gain? What did I learn? And um, how have I evolved in spite of what might have been some traumas and dramas along the way? Right. Yes. And also, you know, how how dramatic do we want to make any situation? Because again, <laughs> it's up to us. Do we want to relive a situation, especially if it was dire, over and over again? Or can we look at where we are now and be grateful that we've got to this point and from where we were? Uh, the, oh yeah. Then, of course, we're talking about gratitude, and how wonderful is that? I think to have joy and gratitude in every day uh, is a good recipe. And forgiveness for yourself when a day goes by that you weren't able to connect with gratitude, where mm -hmm. you know for whatever reason you know you just couldn't get there. Just to be right. forgiving of yourself and of other people, you know that yes. that. Uh, Forgiveness and compassion toward oneself is another, you know, one of the lessons that we've also been learning this full moon on Sunday will take us to that territory, right, about compassion and uh, to that deeper sense of empathy for uh, compassion and sympathy, empathizing uh, with 
you know, the part that of ourselves that experiences these highs and these lows that mm-hmm. has these successes and failures or what we perceive as successes and failures. So, you know, what can we release ourselves from uh, during that full moon? That's what the full moon is always about. And releasing, completing, um, there's revelations that often come during that time. I will not be a bit surprised if Bob calls back up in a few weeks and says, and oh, by the way, that full moon, you know, brought me this epiphany and it's changed my life. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if people come to us with that. Um, mm-hmm. Because that's the nature of the energies right now is that ability for ourselves to rise above, see ourselves from a more loving, higher perspective than to forgive ourselves you know, for what we've been beating ourselves up for or beating up others for and to move forward, just to move forward, mm-hmm. you know, with love. Absolutely. It's pretty striking. Isn't the, the moon, I delight in the moon. It was shining in through my window last night. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. aware it's getting bigger. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And, yeah. and then I also like when it's a slither. And you can actually see the rest of the moon in uh-huh. the, the, the slight outline. So well, I guess what I'm saying is that every phase of the moon <laughs> yep. fascinates me. And I love yeah. seeing it. Mm. Well, and for us here, uh, the moon last night was bright red because of the smoke ah. and haze in the air from fires, from forest fires. Um, both the sun and the moon took on this eerie red color. It was really bizarre um, to look up in the sky, and all I could see was the moon. You can't really see the stars. But the moon shone mm-hmm. through, but it was showing through as red. And, uh, wow. gosh, ama- amazing, amazing. But, you know, there are yeah. other delights in the night sky for us to connect with right now. The planet Mars is beautiful and bright. It is probably just about it, its closest that it will be this year. Um, and connecting with that, it's kind of in the southwestern sky. Is that southwestern? Hold on, I'm going to get my compass out because <laughs> yeah. I know what I know where it is. I can I can identify it, uh, but I don't know from my house. It is actually in the about the southeastern sky, uh, and it rises not long after dark right now. I noticed it about eight o'clock, nine o'clock last night, and mm-hmm. it, uh, not last night, but uh, a couple of nights ago, and. Um, the planet Venus is very low on the western horizon as she's getting ready, prepared for her um, her eventual conjunction to the sun. She'll disappear into the sun's glare and during her retrograde cycle will conjunct with the sun and become the the morning star as her cycle finishes up. And uh, being able to connect with Jupiter right now, Jupiter is very much, she's been traveling fairly close to the moon and uh, it, it's just beautiful to be able to see all these planets in the sky right now and to connect with them. Mm. Mercury even should be emerging from the, the glare of the sun pretty soon and as right. he speeds up. And we'll be able to see him low on the horizon. So lots of opportunities for you to connect with the things that we see and then also that what we know to be the uh, energies that they represent for us. Right. Now, Janet, when you mention the western horizon, that would be the eastern horizon for us in the southern hemisphere? (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't think so. We might have to look at both sides. Because because your sun still rises in the east and sets in the west, right? It doesn't doesn't do it opposite of... Okay, so all the planets should be in the same relative positions. Um, you know, rising, like if Mars is in the southeast sky for us, it should be in the uh, southeast sky for you, I would oh, imagine. Okay. All right. The, the declination, you know, would be what I would be concerned with. Is it, is it visible down that far south? Um, I, I, that, you'd have to consult your, your own uh, astronomy, you know, star maps and things like that to see. Um, gosh, actually, yes. could I do that for you? I don't know. I have this thing on my this app on my phone. It's called Star Map 3D, and I oh. can set this for. Let me see if I can set it location. Let's see, you're in Melbourne, right? That's right. So let me see if I can find 
select a city. M E L B Melbourne, no, not Florida. Melbourne, no, that's right. Victoria, that's Australia. Australia. That's it. Okay. Okay, so I've got that, and now let's look at your sky. And so, the moon for you is in. Am I looking at the southeast sky? Mars is right there. So yes, yours is going to be very similar to ours. Mm. A little. A little bit further to the south for you, so maybe more due south. And certainly not visible right at this moment because it's daylight, you know, right, where you are. Right, of course. Are. Yeah. Um, mm. But today, you know, you can even see the, the planet Saturn. So if go outside tonight and connect. The moon and Saturn are in a conjunction, which means that if you look and you find the moon, you're going to see Saturn close by, and you're going to see right. Mars not far from the moon tonight. Yes, I think because Mars is very bright and has bright and reddish. Yes, yeah, yes. I've picked Mars out. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a girl who might know you know three constellations if you're lucky. <laughs> uh huh. And I and sometimes because I live near close to the airport, there are times when I think, oh, is that a plane coming? And no, it's um a bright planet shining. So. Ah, yes. Uh, those planets are so beautiful, and I, I don't know, I find them inspirational, you know, and mm-hmm. setting, uh, I don't know, they're just, to me, I can connect with them because I already know, you know, from the mythology, from the astrology, and just to be able to connect visually with them really makes me feel, you know, that I'm part of something bigger than what I've thought I was a part of. <laughs> That there's yeah. really something well, big going on. Yeah. So. Yeah, especially when we come to understand that our universe is simply one of, like, <laughs> what's uh, out yeah. there is amazing. Just phenomenal. The world is amazing. You know, and even our experience of it, um, you know, um, as we're evolving and growing through these, you know, these growing pains, I think, you know, is a good word that we could use here, um, you know, because, you know, we're not, we're not being punished. I mean, this isn't, this is all about our just growing and expanding. And I think that's a, a worthy, a worthy endeavor for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, wow. There's so much we're... more I could keep talking about too, but I know our time is getting short. <laughs> Yes, is it? I'm just thinking. All that we've managed to cover this morning is <laughs> phenomenal. We do get around. <laughs> Absolutely, all in the name of astrology. And what a wonderful tool astrology is to help us understand what's happening. And as in Bob's case today, verification of uh, uh, what. Yeah, absolutely. That that uh, that validation that we get from astrology is huge, right? It's mm. it's really, yeah, 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 yeah. It is a beautiful thing. Yes, and we're so fortunate that we have such tools as astrology and numerology. That's another one. Mm-hmm. Janet, as always, it has been an absolute pleasure. Well, thank you. Listeners, please check out Janet of a morning US time on Facebook for a live presentation. But we can see them at other times too, can't we, Janet? I mean, they're there for the day, yeah, they're which there. is fantastic. So, yeah. yeah, Facebook archives the videos. Yeah, so please. Have a look out for Janet on Living Astrology. And please join me again next week when, as I said earlier, we're going to have the Body Talk Hour. Please tune in and find out what your body might be saying to you. Thank you for joining us. May you have a wonderful, wonderful week and enjoy the night sky. Bye for now. You've been listening to another fabulous program on Angel Heart Radio. Our goal is to remind you of how much you matter in the world and to let you know that we appreciate who you are in the world. 
You can check out who's on, when we're on, and who our guests are at angelheartradio.com. Everything is there. It's all just one click away. Angel Heart Radio programs are powerful tools to help you in your life and your life experience. They are not intended, nor should they, be used to replace your medical or legal advice. The views expressed by hosts co-hosts, callers, guests and associates should not be construed as advice from Angel Heart Radio.